What's up everybody, Matt Moran here in our 2022 Mustang Mach-E and in this video I'm going to find out what it's like to road trip in this vehicle. So uh, it'll be our first road trip in the Mach-E and actually my first kind of electric road trip. I did a quick little trip in a Tesla a few years back but otherwise I just wanted to see, you know, there's a lot of information out there and mixed experiences. Some people have terrible experiences with charging stations. Other people have great experiences and no issues. Um, and so in this video I just want to share my experiences of we're going to be doing about a, it's about 400 miles road trip we're going to be doing uh, three different charging stops most likely and um, i'm just going to you know try it out here and see how it goes we're going to have the whole family here with us i'm filming this the day before um so i got it all washed up and ready to go for tomorrow but you know i'm just going to give my experiences here uh, we'll see if it's good bad ugly whatever <laughs> we'll uh, we'll see and uh, go on the adventure together here so to give you a little bit of a preface here for this 400 mile road trip we are going from pittsburgh pennsylvania here to uh sea isle city new jersey uh to do a little beach trip trip for a week and so um you know we're gonna be mostly on the pennsylvania turnpike uh for most of it we'll be hitting up electrify america stations primarily uh the ford app is not routing me through electrify america stations currently because they're doing maintenance on the electrify america stations and that's causing a bug so that ford they i actually pre-programmed the trip last week and it was like having no issues and then they did this change with electrify america and now it's not even showing the station so be flying blind a little bit i was hoping to use ford's nav system but it sounds like I'm just going to have to use the other navigation apps and so I'm using a better route planner which is a third-party thing um, that also has an app and they programmed out and I kind of manually programmed the original Ford plan before the Electrify America stuff the Electrify America stations are supposed to still be working just fine uh, we'll find out if that's true or not but um so that's gonna be the basic overview is just you know hitting uh, those three stops and uh, should be pretty uneventful it's looking like you know we only are gonna be stopping for like 10 minutes at the first one uh, and then only for like 23 minutes to the next one, and then a, a little bit of a longer stop. Um, but it should be a fairly easy trip, even here with a standard range Mach E with all wheel drive, only 224 miles of range. Again, that's the expectation. We'll see what happens. We'll see, you know, what's up with the charging stations and all that, and how these apps work. I'll be uh, trying to discuss that a little bit here in this video as well. But a little bit of an overview, a preface of, uh, you know, what's in store and what we're planning here. And so, yeah, let's uh, get out on the road and see what happens. So I was pleasantly surprised when I came out to the car in the morning to leave that we actually were showing 229 miles of range instead of the 224 the car is supposed to max out at. Another nice surprise was that the front came in handy for me and I was able to actually put my rolling duffel bag in there instead of putting it in the back and stacking it on top and blocking my rear view partially. It was really nice to be able to fit that in there along with the Ford mobile charger and uh, so one thing I really love about the Mach-E is you have that frunk. But anyway, out on the road here, we saw a nice WRX STI nice and early in the morning. And uh, one interesting thing was that I was surprised that it was telling me the Blue Cruise was on, but it wasn't allowing me to do the hands-free thing. It kept telling me to keep my hands on the wheel. I later discovered that that was because I didn't do a software update and the Blue Cruise maps need to be updated like every three months. Otherwise you lose that hands-free functionality. Um, so for the entire drive out to New Jersey, I wasn't able to use the hands-free feature. But anyway, at the first stop here at the Bedford Sheets for the first Electrify America stop here, I pulled up, I selected one of the 150 kilowatt charging stations since that's what the Mach-E uh, peaks at for its charge rate. Didn't want to take up any of the faster chargers. So I plugged it in here and um, this is something, this is my first time using one of these public chargers and uh, it was a little uh, unwieldy using that uh, charger. It's pretty heavy, tough to use with one hand. Um, but so I plugged it in, I was waiting and it just kept saying connecting to vehicle and um, I just was like, wow, this is taking a little bit of a while. I wasn't expecting it to take that long and it just never never ended up working. The very first time I stopped at a public charger and it didn't work. Definitely a little scary, uh, you know, because you're hoping and depending on these stations to work. And the very first time I plugged in, it didn't work. Now, thankfully, there's only one other car at this station at this moment. So I was able to, you know, go into one of the faster 350 kilowatt chargers and plug it in. And thankfully, that one did work. And so this is why it's important to have, you know, plenty of these chargers out there and make sure you don't get to one of these chargers with, you know, a 5% battery level in case you need to limp somewhere else. Um, you know, it's good to have, you know, a buffer there. And uh, that is one nice thing. Speaking of the buffer, the vehicle did more efficiency than I was expecting. So uh, the uh, Better Route Planner app was saying that I would only have 40% 
percent battery when I got to this station. I actually had 49%. And even still, this stop was really just a top off stop just to kind of get me just a little bit of charge to make it to the next one. Um, but honestly, we actually, because, you know, we had a baby with us, you know, we had to change the diaper. We had to, you know, give her a top off as far as, you know, her feedings and stuff. And so as a result, we ended up staying at that charging station longer and we ended up going to a much higher, you know, charge rate than we needed to. Uh, I would have left if there would have been people waiting for the charger just to be polite. But uh, thankfully, you know, we were able to just stay there and I was able to top off the battery. So we had way more charge than we actually needed to have. And so it was kind of nice to have that buffer and not be running on fumes, you know, and, uh, but, you know, I found that, you know, most of the stops that you can see the second stop here, same deal, you know, we arrived with a higher charge than we needed. And uh, the second stop here in Carlisle, uh, same deal, you know, we stopped, we went into the bathroom, we, you know, changed the diaper, gave her a feeding that stop. We also uh, planned around our lunch. So we had our lunch there in the car and uh, that was a longer stop. You know, we needed to stay even with the larger battery buffer, you know, we still needed to stay there for about 20 minutes or so to get up to a 76% battery level. Um, and so, you know, but you know, we just were doing the normal stuff. We weren't waiting around. We weren't, you know, uh, waiting for the car to finish charging. The car was always ready to go before we were. And as you saw, I only needed to get to 76%. I ended up quitting at 87%. Again, I would have left sooner because uh, it really slows down once you get to 80%. Um, and I would have left if there was someone waiting for the charger, but thankfully there wasn't. So I didn't feel bad, you know, getting a little bit of extra range there and topping it off. Um, the charge rates though are, were pretty slow. As you can see, it was 30 kilowatts um, by the time I got to 87% there. Um, but what, whenever it was lower, you know, it certainly is faster. So that's one thing is, you know, if you're unaware of the way these uh, batteries work in electric vehicles, you know, they advertise this peak charge rate of like 150 kilowatts for the Mach-E. You only get that if you're at like at 5% battery level. Otherwise, you're going to be, you know, I think for the first 20 or 30%, you're at like 100 kilowatts or so, and then it drops to like 75 on average. And so, uh, you know, we kept on motoring along here, but by the third charge stop, uh, this was another one that was actually at a mall. And uh, this one I did need to uh, top off just a little bit more just to get to the beach. I only needed to stay there for 10 minutes. Uh, and that's basically all I did end up staying there for. But it was just a quick, you know, we changed the diaper, um, you know, let her run around for a minute. And, uh, you know, that was about it. And we were, you know, ready to go again. But this one, I, I do want to point out, like there was a guy with a BMW i3, which is, you know, a slow charging vehicle that a lot of them have the gas engine backup. And he was just hogging one of those spots. I didn't know where the person was at. And like this Ionic 5 was trying to find a charger. Um, and thankfully they were able to find one of the other ones. But if that spot was a little bit busier, you know, you have this guy in an i3 just sitting there browsing around the mall when he doesn't probably need to be sitting there. That's just part of this evolving infrastructure. You just got to make sure that you're, you know, thinking of the other drivers out there who need to get to where they're going and need their charges as well. And uh, so just, you know, one observation I saw. But otherwise, you know, at all the other charging stops, everyone was very friendly. And one other thing I noticed at this charge stop in particular is you can see those little flaps had opened up there in the Mach-E. Uh, I think it had been getting pretty hot, you know, doing the back-to-back -back fast charging. And this is also in the heat of, uh, you know, a late summer uh, afternoon. And so, you know, that certainly I think gets these things pretty hot. But thankfully, the car performed flawlessly the entire drive, um, had no issues and, uh, you know, was rock solid reliability wise. And so that was great, you know, that it could, you know, handle a 400 mile drive in, in a day, you know, in the middle of the summer heat. And it was able to, you know, still do really, really well. And it's also, you know, so comfortable. It's a great highway cruiser, really nice, you know, road trip companion. And uh, so anyway, we uh, hopped back in the car and headed for the beach. So we rolled into Sea Isle City with about a 10% battery charge there left. And uh, so I was just really happy overall that aside from that very first scare, um, you know, it was a totally uneventful trip. It was, you know, totally flawless as far as the charging. The car performed great. The chargers performed great. And uh, I have no complaints. It was really great. And I'm glad we were able to get to our, you know, destination without any issues. And when we got to the beach house we were staying at, thankfully we were able to use the garage. So I was able to plug in and charge the vehicle with the slow, you know, mobile charger. Um, and so, I mean, it took you know, half the week to get back to 100%, but I was able to, you know, keep charging the vehicle all week. And that also gave us juice. So we were able to, you know, run around town um, in the car and it didn't have to be limping around on a 10% battery. So that definitely made it easier. But, you know, if you are going on one of these road trips and you don't have the luxury of using a garage or an outlet, you know, at the place you're staying at, you know, just try and find a hotel that has a destination charger. Many of them do. Some of them have Tesla chargers you can buy an adapter for. Um, but, you know, I highly recommend, you know, at least that way you can start off your day with a full charge or at least, you know, some charge so that, you know, you're not trying to find a public charger at the beach here or wherever you're at. And during the week, I also uh, went ahead and did the update. So we were able to do Blue Cruise on the way back. But as you'll see, it showed me that the update was uh, completed successfully, but it also 
was showing me that uh, I guess because you know we're driving the less efficient you know higher speeds on the highway the range it was quoting me there for the outbound trip on the way back home was going to be 217 miles so it was you know adjusting that range accordingly it, it very much varies depending on the circumstances the weather everything you know as far as how much range it's predicting you'll have but whenever it was time to head back home uh, you know I tried using the Ford Pass app again once again it still was not communicating with the Electrify America stations and it also just was picking this Hyundai dealers uh, level 2 charger it loved that charger and wanted me to keep going there and I don't know why because there's other EVgo fast chargers within the vicinity I could have gone to as well thankfully you know a better route planner they had a better route for me here and so interestingly you know since I was uh, starting with 100% charge from CIL City it didn't want me to stop at the mall because that would have been too close and it would have been a slower battery charge so it instead this was suggesting that I go all the way to Philadelphia and then charge up and you know top off the battery just a little bit there in order to get to uh, the uh, sheets in Carlisle and um, so that was the plan so that's what we ended up doing and thankfully now with iOS 16 on the iPhone um, they actually have Mach-E integration so it will actually be able to read the battery level from the car with CarPlay and uh, they also have multi-stop routing now so I was able to actually run the navigation through Apple Maps and it was able to give me predictions for how much uh, range I would have left and it also was suggesting that same route as a better route planner so it's pretty intelligent with its routing and uh, so I was able to actually use that and I was able to you know see okay here's how much battery I'll have left and and it was kind of nice to you know have the maps be working with the car to keep tabs on everything to make sure I was going to have enough range to get to each of the stops and so that was a really nice feature I'm really glad that you know they were able to integrate that and I mean you know the timing was just perfect because that literally just came out like a week ago and I was able to use it here and it did work pretty well although every time I would reach a stop in Apple Maps it would kind of get confused and sometimes I'd have to reload the entire route and uh, it wouldn't be able to just resume from where I was stopped at there so it's not perfect still a little buggy but still better than nothing and really nice to have that since the Ford Pass thing wasn't working properly. So anyway, uh, we headed out here on the road on the drive back and thankfully the hands-free function was working now thanks to that software update. And so it was really nice to have. Now, I still think it is not as good as a uh, Cadillac Super Cruise. Uh, I think that system is much better in many ways, uh, but this was decent. You know, it was a little iffy with the lane placement. The lane placement wasn't super natural. It loved hugging right up against 18 wheelers and stuff. And so I would actually take manual control and, you know, get my myself a little bit further away from traffic and stuff but it certainly was a little bit of a fatigue reducer and a little bit nicer to have than just regular adaptive cruise control but uh, you know nice to have and hopefully they'll do some more improvements they did just announce they're going to have an improvement here in the next couple of months uh, to give you uh, a better lane change capability and better lane placement and all that kind of stuff so uh, I'm sure Blue Cruise will get better but wasn't in love with it here on the first uh, you know trip here we did but anyway first charge stop here in Philadelphia um, you know since I was already starting at a 60% charge you know it wasn't super fast but it's still a decent charge rate here i ended up getting up over uh, 80 kilowatts there before it kind of uh, throttled me but um again just by the time we had changed the baby's diaper got all that stuff and we're ready to go the car was already ready to go before we were every single time at all these charge stops the car was always ready to go before we were it was not inconvenient it did not take any longer than any gas powered stop we would have uh, done uh, just because of our circumstances again not everyone has babies and you know everyone wants to you know do these power trips but I mean you know you could see um, it was also you know pretty cheap too so I mean that was again you know pretty short charge there from you know 60 to 87 again I would have left sooner if someone had been waiting um, but thankfully you know we were able to have some lunch there and uh, get a you know nice large battery top off there uh, before we hit the road again but uh, um, you know, all these uh, charge stops, by the way, were super cheap. Even if I had paid for them, it was free because of this maintenance that Electrify America is doing on the network. So entirely free for the driving on this road trip, which is awesome. But even if we did have to pay, it was like even the biggest charge stops were like 10 bucks. So, I mean, you'll save a ton of money over gas if you're road tripping in one of these things and you're willing to deal with the slight inconvenience of, you know, having to stop for a little longer, which again, in our case, wasn't an inconvenience whatsoever. Um, so anyway, we made it to the second uh, charge stop here in Carlisle once again same charger as last time and you know work flawlessly and uh, this one you know is uh, going pretty quick but I was a little disappointed in the charge rate at this one because 29% I should still be peaking over 100 kilowatts um, and yet I'm you know sitting at 83 so that is another thing is even if your car can accept a super fast charge it doesn't always mean you'll get that super fast charge sometimes the chargers uh, can only put out a certain amount it just depends on a million different factors the weather the temperature of your battery in the car the temperature of the outside you know air I mean 
there's a million variables. So, you know, those advertising rates, I think, you know, they're a little misleading, but, you know, just keep in mind that that's an ideal, you know, number. But I mean, here's another stop, eight bucks to, ch to do that charge there. Um, and it was a nice large chunk that we, you know, regained back. And then we hit the road again and uh, took in the beautiful views here of the Pennsylvania Turnpike. It's so nice driving on the Turnpike if you've never done it before. It's not cheap with the tolls these days, but, um, you know, it's just, it's a really nice uh, road to drive on, nice high speed limits and all that. And so the last charge stop, char charging in Bedford once again, um, um, that same charger was unavailable and there was other cars there waiting. So this was uh, not ideal because I ended up having to sit there and wait. Now, thankfully, the way the conditions were, um, there was two cars ready to go pretty soon after we arrived. So we only had to sit around for about five or 10 minutes before um, we we're able to, you know, take one of those chargers after someone left and, you know, slide in there and uh, started charging up. And uh, it was a nice fast charge too. As you can see, this uh, one, we ended up uh, getting up well over hundred kilowatts for the charge rate. So that was good. Um, but that, you know, again, just shows the limitations of, you know, if one of these chargers is down, you got three chargers and you got a bunch of people road tripping. This was also around rush hour on a Friday. So, um, you know, maybe a little bit more busy than if we would have, you know, done a, a weekend drive or something. But, you know, just illustrates like, you know, if these chargers aren't going to always be 100% functional all the time, you know, then you got to make sure that you have a plenty of them out there. And so, you know, I'd love to see Electrify America add more than four charging stations, you know, maybe add a few more, um, just give themselves a little bit of a buffer or just improve the reliability. So these things are never down, um, you know, and then that way you don't ever have these worries. But anyway, um, you know, everyone was very friendly at that charge stop, by the way, too. People were just hanging out and talking. And uh, the one guy was actually even calling Electrify America to try and get that other charger fixed. But, you know, there was no luck there. It just wasn't being fixed for whatever reason. And then once again, you know, that was another stop where, you know, we basically just did all of the usual stuff, going to the bathroom, getting a snack, getting a drink, changing the baby's diaper, feeding the baby. And then, you know, we were back in the car and the car was basically ready to go. And, uh, you know, no inconveniences whatsoever. So I think overall, the real takeaway for me is that, um, you know, in our experience, it was no more inconvenient than a gas stop. I think a lot of people, if you actually were to hit a stopwatch from the second you pull up at a gas pump and you time yourself for how long it takes you to pump your gas and then go into the convenience store, grab a snack, grab a drink, go to the bathroom, stand in line at the register and then come back out. You know, you might be surprised just how long that actually takes you. And whenever you say, oh man, it's going to take 20 minutes to charge the car. If you plan it right, you know, and you plan it around lunch stops and refreshment stops and bathroom breaks, um, it really isn't going to be much more inconvenient as long as again the chargers are functional and there aren't a bunch of other people at them those are the only two unpredictable things you never can really predict you can definitely use the plug share app that certainly helps you to weed out some of the less reliable uh, stations or you know give you a heads up if you uh, see that there is a you know, charger that's down ahead of time but aside from that you know those are the, just the really two unknowns but you know it's certainly something i wouldn't you know hesitate to take another road trip in an electric vehicle again uh, i think we're planning on you know doing more road trips in the mach -E in the future for sure and i have total confidence that you know they'll be hopefully as uneventful as this one was but anyway just wanted to give you guys that, you know, little insight there because I see a lot of horror stories about, you know, oh, chargers never work, this infrastructure isn't ready, this is a nightmare and all this stuff. And, you know, I've seen on the forums that's not always true. And a lot of people have no issues on road trips. And a lot of times, you know, people are using these chargers every day to get to where they need to go reliably. So uh, just happy to be able to provide, you know, a, a counterpoint to all the uh, you know, ne negativity out there as far as the charging infrastructure goes. Uh, it worked great for us. Uh, you know, some of the other networks works might not be as reliable, but Electrify America, aside from that one being down, you know, it was really reliable, always worked and, you know, it was a really good setup. And so anyway, that's our uh, road trip in the Mach-E. So let me know in the comments below what you think about, you know, the charging infrastructure and uh, what it's like the road trip in an electric vehicle. Let me know if you have any experiences of your own driving electric vehicles on road trips and, you know, what it's like um, for you. I'd certainly love to hear everyone else's experiences. Um, but uh, overall, I'm very happy to report that ours was a really good experience, thankfully. But anyway, thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.